Hello students, I'm Imani Sharma, your UGC Net Educator. In this new YouTube video, we are going to move forward with the concept series that we had, right? So in the previous lectures, in the previous videos, we have covered around three to four writers and today we are going to talk about a new writer who was really prominent. We are talking about the Indian novelists. So the next Indian novelist in line that we have is Raja Rao which you like you know famously know for his work Kantapura which is really prominent when we talk about the Indian literature which is written in English right so we'll talk about certain novels of his certain works etc but the summaries in its entirety you all are supposed to do on your own so first of all let's just see like where was he born what did he look like so here I have a picture of Raja Rao and he was born in the year 1908 and passed away in 2006. So in 1908, he was born in Mysore, right? And in 2006, whereas he, when he passed away, he passed away in Austin, Texas in USA. So, these are certain biographical details that we have, right? There's also one thing that I want you guys to majorly note down is that he was married thrice, which had an impact on his novels, right? Certain themes, of course, we say that writers are the ones who get some kind of, you know, motivation, some kind of inspiration from their own lives. Same was the case with Rao. So he is also one of the prominent writers when we talk about someone who was writing in the decades, in the mid decades of the 20th century. His novel was something which was showing us the strain of Indianness per se. Correct. So first of all, one major thing also to note down here is that he, along with Mulkrajanan, and R.K. Narayan is known as the founding, the three founding pillars of the Indian novel in English or Indo-English novel, right? He also translated the Indian sensibilities that how we feel into English, but also tried to incorporate Indian metaphysics and philosophy in his fictional work. So through these very slides that I have brought forth for you, you all will know that how he had certain kind of inclination and he was one of those people who time and again revisited India. So he was born in India, he moved to US and then again he came back in India, so on and so forth. So that thing also had an impact on one of his novels as well. So you see, these are certain things which we are supposed to talk about. Also, when we talk about the Indianness in his novels, when we will be talking about Kantapura, we'll see. You will see that how in the preface as well, he gave certain things about how the novel will be proceeding, right? What will you guys as a reader find in there? So again, certain facts here. He won certain awards. So the first award that is of note here is the Sahitya Akademi Award, which he won for The Serpent and the Rope, correct? So it was published, the novel The Serpent and the Rope was published in the year 1960, we'll be talking about that as well, but he later on won the award for the same in 1964. Padma Bhushan and Padma Vibhushan, two gallantry awards when we talk about Indians, right? So these two awards were also awarded to him. Coming to the Padma Vibhushan, it was given to him, it was presented to him in the year 2007 and it was given posthumously. So what did we do in the previous videos as well? What do we mean by posthumously? Posthumously means when anything is written, published, you know, given like, like he was awarded, right? After his death. So here again, posthumously means after death. So he, in the previous slides, in the introductory slide only, we saw that he was the one who passed away in the year 2006. So after one year, when he passed away, he was given Padma Vibhushan. Coming to next award that we have here is Noshtat International Prize for Literature. So this is a kind of prize which is given to the international people for their contribution to the field of literature. 
Like we have Nobel Prize in Literature, same is the case with the Shnushtat International Prize for Literature. So basically this award is so prominent that it has been compared with the Nobel Prize in Literature because it is given to all the writings of a particular writer. Like based on that very thing this prize is given. So he was given, he was awarded with this very prize for literature as well in the year 1988. Next, moving on to the first work of prominence. First work of importance by Raja Rao is Kantapura, which is of course his first novel, right? First novel, largely realist vein it is and it was published in the year 1938. So, you can write these very things now. Set in a fictional town. So, just like R.K. Narayan had a fictional town, Malgudi, Raja Rao also was doing the same. But in one of his novels, there was a fictional town named Kantapura on which the title is based. Right? Describes a village and its residence in the southern part of India. So, you will see because of the fact that he was also born in Mysore, that southern Indian vibe had some kind of influence on him and he, because of the fact that they say that the real, the closer you are to your community etc, the more it will reflect on you. Same was the case with him as well. The way he was born in southern India had some kind of influence on his writings as well. Right? Through its narrator, one of the village's older women is named as Achakka. Achakka is who? The narrator of the entire story and she, this is a really important point to note down wherever you are making your notes, that Achakka always and always talks about things in we, that we were looking for this very thing. She does not talk in first person, she does not talk in second person, she always and always talks in third person using the word we, right? The novel explores the effects of India's ind independence movement and here also you will see the effect of Mahatma Gandhi's civil disobedience and non-violence, you know, movement that he had, Ahinsa only. Correct? So, it is his best known novel, particularly outside India and a combination between the traditional folk tale and the modern contemporary novel. Now, now why do I say that? Why do I say that Kantapura is somewhere or the other related with the traditional folklore and as well as it has some kind of modern elements in it. First of all, Rao when wrote this very novel, he wrote this, we saw this very word, largely realist. So realism is something which talks about things as they are. All right. So, when we are talking about things as they are, it has some kind of modernist stance into it because all the modernist, most of the modernist novels were influenced by this very movement of realism. That is why we see the realist stance here which is the modern element. The traditional folktale element is that the tales that he weaves in this novel Kantapura are the ones which are, you know, influenced by the Puranas. Correct? So that is why the amalgamation of the traditional, that is the Puranas, along with the real reality of India, the nature of people, the way they talk, the way they behave. Correct? That is realist. So modern plus traditional elements. First page, cover page of Kantapura. Now coming to the important characters that we have here in Kantapura. First of all, we have the protagonist who is named Murti. We know that the narrator is a Chakka. She is a female. She is a very older woman, right, in the village. And she is the one who narrates the entire story and talks only in the word, in third person, we. Correct? Coming back again to the, uh, you know, protagonist that we have here is Murti. He is a young Brahmin. No down whatever I bring up to you in commas especially when describing the characters. They, they, they can ask these very things because these are taken directly from the novels, right? So he is known as the noble cow, quiet, generous, serene, different and brahmanic and referred to as the small mountain. So you can jot this very pointer down. He is the protagonist. He is thought of, he is talked about as someone who is really patient, someone who is really calm, right? So that is what he is. Next we have Bhatta. 
Bhatra is a wealthy land owner in Kantapura who exploits the villagers. So basically, the entire novel rotates around that how Murti is the one who is influenced by the Gandhian idea of non-violence and wants freedom from the Britishers. So he is the one who brings this very thought to the village of fictional village that is known as Kantapura. And when he brings this very idea to the villagers that are there, they are also influenced and they want that yes, we should be freed from the Britishers. Right? So Bhatta is the one who exploits the villagers whosoever is there. Patel Range Gauda is someone who is known as the tiger and who helps Murti. He behaves and he acts like the major of the village. Coming back, an important point that I missed out was that Murti was known as a small mountain. Whereas Gandhi was known as the large mountain in this very novel. So you can write this very pointer down that large mountain Mahatma Gandhi. Right? Jot this pointer down first of all. Then we have Rangamma. Rangamma is a well-educated, deferent, soft-voiced, gentle, gestured woman who is really strong-willed. And she is the one who also gets influenced by Murti's idea of freedom and non-violence, which he got influenced by or through Mahatma Gandhi. So she is the one who influences or let's just say influences or motivates the women of India, the women of the village Kantapura to take or to participate in the freedom movement, right? Bade Khan now is a police officer, heavy set bearded Muslim policeman, an agent of the British who beats Murti. So, of course, when these people, the ones who want independence from the Britishers, along with Murti, right? Patel, Range Gaura, Rangamma, etc., and many more characters which are there in the novel. When they come together to fight against the British, the British are the ones who want to exploit them, who want to, you know, suppress these very thoughts of the Indians. So they give Bade Khan the command to do that. And Bade Khan, on the other hand, because of the fact that he is a, let's just say, he's a slave of the British, he works like they want him to do, so he does the same. And what he does is he beats Murti. And at times we see throughout the course of the novel, we see that Murti is the person who goes in jail as well. And by the end of the novel, he comes out of jail as well. So what happens is, but when he comes out of jail, his idea of non-violence from the Gandhian perspective has already, you know, washed away. He thinks that now his village is beyond repair because people have raped, people have exploited the villagers there. So the entire idea of the movement that was freedom movement from the British that gets erased from the mind of Murti. So this is the entire story there. Correct? And yes, it was written with the stance, it has certain idioms, etc., certain phrases which are, you know, the ones which the, in the southern part of India were used. So you see the influences of the language on Raja Rao and how he is the one who incorporates these very things in his novels. Next is The Serpent and the Rope, published in the year 1960 correct, was awarded the Sahitya Academy Award in the year 1964, yes. And it is an autobiographical style novel, autobiographical or semi-autobiographical, why do we say that? Now this is the novel where we talk about, I gave you the reference that yes, Rao was married for three times, he had three wives and he had a marriage which was not so stable, the relationship with his wife was not so stable, hence he married for the second time and the third time as well. 
So, it is about Ramaswamy. Ramaswamy is first of all the protagonist. We will be talking about him. His thought process and how it develops through the course of line with the Vedantic philosophy. So, this novel is something which deals with the philosophical stance. Correct? Coming to takes Rao's first marriage and its disintegration as its subject. So, I told you that he married three times. The first marriage was also not really good. So, that is why this was, you know, somewhere or the other semi-autobiographical. We can say it in that very stance because of the fact that the disintegration that he had in his real life, in his marriage, was, you know, is represented in this very novel named The Serpent and the Rope. Now, there is this very prominent, you know, quote from this very book, this very novel, that India is not a country like France is or England. India is an idea. India is a philosophy. This is what is said. This is what is quoted in this very book, right? So, you see, this very thing and this very thing as well. These are the, there were three, you know, we are talked about three countries, France, England, India. And this novel also deals with the trips of Ramaswamy meeting his wife, etc., moving for, uh, forth, etc., back and forth to India, then coming back to England, France, so on and so forth, right? So that is why the reference. Now, the cover page of the book, The Serpent and the Rope. So you see the serpent here, the rope here. Now, what does the, in the previous slides we did, we talk about Kantapura, how the title was inspired. Here the title is inspired by the snake, which is the illusion, and the rope, which is the reality. So here you see through his very novel, The Serpent and the Rope, the theme of illusion versus reality and how man should be the one who should be pursuing truth of life. What we see is not always true. Correct? So, you can write this very thing down as well. The title and all. Now, coming to the characters, the main characters as I usually talk about in these very concept videos. Number one is Ramaswamy, who is a young intellectual Brahmin, right, whom the entire story revolves around, who is the protagonist, right. So, he is also the protagonist. Coming to Madeline. Madeline is first wife or the only wife if we talk about a Brahma Swami and the third person, the, the one who is prominent is Savitri. Savitri is a student, a Cambridge student whom Brahma Swami meets and they eventually fall in love. So basically the story revolves around Rama Swami that how first of all he marries Madeline and from the initial or the beginning of the novel only, the reader gets the idea that he does not hold really good view of whom? Of Madeline, right? So, we know that yes, there is some kind of disintegration in the novel when we talk about the serpent and the rope novel, right? Between whom? The, between the character named Rama Swami and Madeline that their marriage is not really going well, right? So, this also talks about the tours that I told you about that first of all Ramaswamy comes to India to meet his mother etc. Then he goes back to England so on and so forth. So these are certain tours and eventually one day he meets this very girl, girl named Savitri who studies in the Cambridge College or Cambridge University and there when he meets her he is like yes he describes her as too much of a modern woman right. That she is too much of a modern woman, but eventually he cannot get her off his mind. He keeps and keeps on thinking about Savitri day and night. And when he comes back, he sees that the disintegration between him and Madeline was there. And him meeting Savitri was something which also added more into it. So he things when he talks about, he, he keeps on thinking about this very thing that do I really love Savitri and all and eventually when he confesses this very thing, he also suffers from some chronic disease related to lung and when Savitri by the end of the novel comes to meet him, what happens is that she and he, they oh, both of them 
come on a mutually agreed upon decision that they both should part ways now what happens is that they say that they both should part ways because the happiness lies between the happiness of others that the philosophy that we have in relationships right the true relationships that we say so they both part ways and eventually rama swami divorces madeline rama swami divorces his wife madeline and eventually tries to seek out his guru that is what we talked about in the previous slide of the vedantic philosophy that he wants to do he wants to become a sage he wants to you know incorporate those very things that the other sages have he wants to have that spiritual awakening right so this is what the entire novel is all about correct the other novels that we have here of which you at least should be knowing the names if you want to you can read the summaries on your own kantapura we have talked about serpent and the rope the cat and shakespeare which has a subtitle a tale of india 1965 comrade kirilov 1976 the chess master and his moves 1988 most of the times in ugc net examination the names of these very novels have occurred especially if i talk about kantapura and the serpent and the rope there have been some kind of deep questions which have been asked but yes you can and you should read the summaries if available of these other novels as well next is he also was a writer who wrote short stories as well short short story collections as all, as all right a client the cow of the barricades a really prominent one you need not read the entire short stories when we talk about the indian short story writers you can at least know the names of their collections right the policeman and the rose jupiter and mars and the right and the world jot down the years along with these very things then we have the non fiction the non fiction writings of rao raja rao that we have is the meaning of india where he jotted down he wrote a number of essays and then collected them and gave them this meaning right the meaning of india gave them this title sorry the meaning of india which was published in the year 1996 coming to the next non fiction is changing india an anthology in which rao talks about that how indian thoughts developed how from raja ram mohan roy to jawahar lal nehru how indian thoughts were processing how they were evolving this is a book on that and it was edited with iqbal singh next is tomorrow which is a journal right which in which ahmed ali also contributed so he was a co-editor there in the journal named tomorrow in the year 1944 and the next one the prominent non fiction that he wrote the great indian way 1998 a biography of mohandas karamchand gandhi that is mk gandhi that we know him of right so gandhi ji ki biography he has written the great indian way now certain questions from the pyq that i have for you who wrote the introduction of kantapura the answer to this question is option a r partha sarthi you would have heard his name as well he is one of the most prominent you know poets of india next question for which novel raja rao was awarded the sahitya academy award in the year 1964 we have done this very thing in the previous slide so i hope you know the answer to this one the answer to this question is option a that is the serpent and the rope next question the narrative of raja rao's kantapura is based on what we have discussed about this very thing as well so you can look here see what do we have in the answer as the answer here the answer is option c puranas which of the novel did raja rao call a philosophical comedy The answer to this very question is option C. The cat and the Shakespeare is the one 
which Rao called a philosophical comedy, but we also see in the serpent and the rope the illusion versus reality. It was also philosophical in nature. So you can read, you can see that how his idea of writing comprises of the Indianness, the realism, and how he also deals with the philosophy all in all. Right? We'll be moving forward with some new writer in some new video. Till then, you keep on revising, jotting these very pointers down when you're making notes on your own. I'll see you again in a new video. Thank you so much. Have a good day.